designed to encourage, empower, and educate real estate professionals by sharing best practices from business leaders that are proven winners. I'm your host, Kyle Malnati, and this is Calibrate Real Estate. Broadcasting from the Mile High City, thank you for tuning in to the Calibrate Real Estate podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kyle Malnati. This is episode 50, oh my goodness, 50 episodes. And I was joking with my staff in a meeting earlier today that I bet about 40 of them were good. The rest of them were, were ones that I hosted by myself. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, thank you so much, Just to, all, all seriousness here. Thank you so much for everybody who is tuned in to podcasts, whether it be one, two, or 30, or 40, or even if you've listened to all 50, thank you for tuning in via iTunes and YouTube. Our subscriber list is growing, our email list is growing, and we have now 18 reviews. Each time I mention it, we get more reviews, so I'm gonna continue doing that. Thank you in advance for anybody that would drop a five-star review in iTunes. So without further ado, let's get right into our mission. Our mission is to encourage, empower, and educate real estate professionals around the world. You know that because that is part of our intro. This episode really ties in very well with our mission. It's a keynote speech by a gentleman named Rogers Healy. Rogers really needs no introduction, but for those of you that don't know Rogers Healy, I would Google him. Rogers with an S Healy, and his company is Rogers Healy and Associates in Texas. They have a multitude of brands, and you're going to hear Rogers talk about the story of growing a company uh, to a very large real estate brokerage firm in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And uh, this is content, as some of you might know, from our real estate mastermind that we hosted here in Denver earlier this year. So if you want to hear the entire episode, it is earlier in the year, and you can go ahead and find Roger's episode in our show notes. And um, what we're going to do here is we're going to play Roger's content, and then I'll be back right after Roger's. So enjoy Roger's Healy in his keynote speech to 100 real estate professionals here in Denver. And I thought people respected me, like I said, but it was a drug. And then the best thing that would happen at that time in my life, or the, the, the least fun, is that I have people that I grew up with, right? The best realtors, the word that I like to associate with people that are really good at real estate is they're popular. What does popular mean? They know you. Like Hitler was popular. He wasn't well liked. But up until that time in my life, I was really popular because everyone knew me. I was the funny fat guy. And I was the funny fat guy with the goatee. And then I was like the funny-ish guy that lost a bunch of weight and everyone thought I had surgery. And I was like, no, I just actually started exercising. But <laughs> I did this, but I just assumed, because I was in real estate, all my friends were going to call me and say, what? I want to hire you. Guess what happened? They didn't. So my stance quickly became, you're my friend? You're not going to hire me? Guess what? We're not friends. I got really, really good at burning bridges, like flawless. And now one of my wives is going and trying to build those bridges back. And I'll tell you right now, that sucks. You guys seen Billy Madison? That was my favorite movie as a kid, right? You probably tell a lot. That scene where Steve Buscemi's putting on his lipstick and he's got like that people to kill list. I'm on like 5,000 people to kill list. So uh, later on, like I told you guys, my why would be to go and build those bridges back up. But don't get me wrong, I, I never got close to the unethical side of things, but I got really close to selling my soul like for a commission. It was weird. And you guys reach that point in your career where you're making enough money, um, like you're comfortable. It's a weird thing, right? And all of a sudden it's not about the money, it's about the deal. That's just as unhealthy. So for me, I was getting awards. I was getting recognition, like the 30 or 30 thing back when I got it. If anyone in here like first year that you just got it, it's awesome. That was the coolest moment of my entire life. I can tell you exactly where I was, who I was with, and it, the feeling I had. I'm dead serious. I was at my ex-girlfriend Sloan Looney's house. Her ex-boyfriend was Jay Cutler. I found out he was trying to kick my butt. I got a phone call from the lady, this lady that used to work at Realtor Magazine, and she told me that I got it. And I started crying. I was like, it's unbelievable. 30 under 30. That's crazy. And guess what it wasn't based on, which was the coolest part? Production. Everyone had an angle. And I'm about to show you mine in about 15 minutes, my picture. And when I got that, my ego just got even bigger. I was the celebrity realtor, right? Uh-uh, not happening. So for me, it was new, and I, and I thought I loved it. And then boom. Dead. Gone. I was miserable. 
I couldn't do it. And I thought I loved real estate, then I didn't like it at all. I lost deals. You guys lost a deal? Remember that first big deal you lost? Right? Sucks. I lost my friends because they didn't hire me. And I treated them like crap. And then what's worse than working with a friend? Ready for this? Family. What's worse than not working with family? Or what's worse than working with family? Not working with family. I missed a few Thanksgivings in my day. Literally. And it caused a civil war with my family because my mom and my dad and my sister are always going to defend me. Stupid. I had to do phone duty. You guys remember this one? Anyone ever done phone duty? What do you guys think that means? Like property calls. Twice a month. Saturdays and Sundays from 9 until 3, I had to sit up there and answer the phone. In my mind, what was I? Secretary. Mrs. Rogers, it's awful. I had to do open houses. You guys like open houses? They work now. But back in the day, I was just really, I was not an open house fan. I had to buy marketing pieces. You guys remember that? You spend like 5000 or whatever, $15,000 getting your real estate license or whatever, a few thousand bucks, and all of a sudden you get a listing. What do you have to do with the listing? You got to pay for it. What do you mean? They didn't have camera phones back then. I used to take a disposable camera and go to Eckerd and get it dis to get it um, printed out and scanned to save like six bucks. It doesn't work that way. It was awful. And all this stuff started to build up. I had to make cold calls, which, by the way, I like cold calls. I think it builds thick skin. But after the cold call, what did I have to do? My least favorite thing in business, I had to follow up. I sucked at it. I still do. Obviously, I suck at it. Uh, I had to work on weekends, which means, guess what? Every day in this business is what? It's Monday. I love that now, but every single day in this business is a Monday. I had to spend money to make money. I had to get trained. And here's a good one. I had to keep studying. They never tell you when you pass that test, you've got to go take continuing education. You've got to pass it, too. In Texas, it's open book, and you get to take it three times. I spent three, week, three weeks ago, I spent my entire week, and I was like, I can't fail this. I can't fail it. Right? Um, and like I talked earlier, I couldn't take vacations with family and friends, which led to another dreadful thing. I had no hobbies. Anyone feel that? You guys understand that? You know how my hobby was? It was real estate. Your hobby can't be your work. I don't care what anybody tells you. Nobody loves working more than they love their family, more than they love their God, more than they love their friends. Nobody. But that was me. And it cost me business in the long run. I thought I was being so smart, but I outworked everybody. And that was my only thing I did in my mind better than anyone I'd ever met is I outworked them, which in my mind when I had to work longer hours. And my least favorite thing about real estate that had me burn out the first time is I had to always be professional. I'm not a political person. I like, obviously, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm not a political person. It was hard. But there's a saying that goes like this. You ready for it? The higher up you get on the ladder, the easier it is to shoot you down. Which means everybody at one point, once you're successful in this business, is waiting for you to do what? Fail. They want you to fall what? On your freaking face. They want to be right there with you when you fall. Anyone felt this before? Do it longer. Unfortunately, you will. I hated it. I was burned out. Uh, three years in the business, by the way. I'm 25 years old at this time. And I was done. I was out. Adios. Big word I like to use is mindset. It was changing. And I thought I hated real estate. It was like my newest version of studying, a real advanced version of, of hate, hate. And I had to get out of town, right? You guys ever had that moment where you're just like, oh, my God, every house is the same. Like, every client's awful. Like, I hate this. Like, I have to go. I was burned out. And I got a phone call. Within 20 minutes of me having this, like, pivotal moment in my entire life, which I thought was going to change everything, my phone rang. It was my roommate. He said, hey, we're going to go out of town tomorrow. We're going to go skiing. And you want to come. Which, like, I was, like, always the political invite. Right? People, no one, no one ever expects a successful realtor to say yes to anything unless it benefits them 100%. And I said, sure, I'm in. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, I'm in. The reason I was in, my roommate at the time was a really, really good athlete, and he'd never been skiing. And I grew up skiing. So what did I have the opportunity to do? <laughs> Win. So here we are, my roommate and I. And at that point in my life, yeah, my wife came back in. It wouldn't leave. It was February 23rd, 2007. My roommate had a really, 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 really bad day the day before. He lost his company an opportunity to go in advance, to make a lot more money. And I was just miserable. So I was having a bad couple months. We went up. We chatted up on the slopes, which is such like a stupid white boy thing to say. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> we went and chatted it up on the slopes, OK? Let's just, 
we probably had a bread bowl with chili and we were drinking a beer. <laughs> when you write a speech and you try to read it, you, as you're write, reading the speech, you're like, what a dork. <laughs> so on, on day two, guys, midway up the lift, I opened up about how I was just tired of the real estate business. And I guarantee you guys have probably felt this feeling. I was tired of it. I wasn't tired of working. I didn't mind that. I wasn't tired of business, but I was tired of real estate. I didn't want to be a realtor, right? Like a realtor, right? You see those come, I'm like, oh my God. I didn't, I, it wasn't my thing. I do not like name tags. It wasn't my thing. And I was surrounded by people that every single day, they had, and if you guys do this, more power to you, two name tags. One for work, one for social. Guess what's on the social one? <laughs> Glitter. And I would see this and it would drive me crazy. And most importantly, out of all the people I worked with at my, at my company at the time, I didn't want to have lunch with them. So what happened? You guys know who that is? The kicker? Just kidding. So Tony Romo, my roommate at the time, the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, the day before the Cowboys lost to the Seattle uh, Seahawks in the playoffs. Are you from Seattle? Nice win. Um, he botched the fumble, or he, he botched the snap. And we had perspective. And if you guys aren't a Tony Romo fan, hopefully you will be now, because he's, he's, he's a good man. He's a man of God and a good father and husband. But he looked at me, just like in a very Seinfeld approach. Like, why is Seinfeld such a, a popular show? What's it about? Like, nothing. Like, life. And it's just, like, so simple. He looked at me, he's like, well, why don't you just start your own real estate company, and that way you get to pick and choose who works with you, and you get to pick when you work. I was like, I was like all right, Romo, we, we got a deal. Right? So we went out that night and we celebrated. I found out my why. I was going to change real estate. That was my reason. I couldn't quit. I put three years into this business. Who in here has done it longer than three years? Good for you. Longer than five years. Ten. All right? It's crazy. I couldn't quit. I had experienced something I had never experienced before. That's called compounding, which means all the work I put in two years ago was starting to pay off, right? Right? Like you said, like you want to go and make money based on what's going to happen, happen five years from now. So for me, my mindset changed. So I was now a self-proclaimed mature, 26-year-old with really long hair, ready to set the world on fire. Again, you guys remember these t-shirts I did? No, no one does. My, parent, my parents do. So every time I see myself wandering in the world of the normal, I, I catch myself and I remind myself something that's very, very powerful. And like, like I said earlier, I'm a, I'm a Christian man, and this is something that's just a really cool, really cool saying. And, and, and God doesn't, he doesn't call the equipped. You guys know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm talking about? He equips the called. One more time, he doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. No matter your religious background, remember that, please. Right? Like, I think the coolest animal is an eagle. It's an eagle. What does an eagle wait to do until it's called? It, it waits to fly, and it soars. It's crazy, and ironically, the eagles just won the Super Bowl. So for me, I would found my why again. I had a reason. I wanted to change an entire industry. Ignorant as hell, 26 years old, there's probably a million realtors back in the day. I wanted to change it, and I thought that I could. But guess what didn't come with my why? Somebody guess. Like a puppy? No. A business plan. You guys know what a business plan is? I didn't. I didn't know what that was. I was, a, I was an aspiring 26-year-old with a degree in advertising, literally a MySpace account, some skinny jeans, and thank God, no girlfriend. Okay? By the way, if any of you guys are going to start a company, like the girl, that Amy, that did it like 10 days before birth, more power to you. If I would have been in a relationship back when I started this company, like God knows what would have, what would have happened. So for me, it was a perfect combination. I was going to launch the biggest real estate company in the world. You guys heard that, right? The biggest. The biggest real estate company in the whole world. I had no idea what I was doing. None. I didn't know how to lead. And here's a, do you guys know what the term emotionally intelligent means? I didn't. I wasn't emotionally intelligent. And I had zero systems, right? Salespeople and systems don't go hand in hand. There's a really cool quote by Frank Sinatra. You guys heard this? People pay me to sing. Great quote. What does that mean? They don't pay him to do what? Sell t-shirts, sell tickets, clean up. It's like I heard that. I was like, well, I'm a singer. You can't be a singer and have a company at the same time. But what I had now was something different than I'd ever had before. I had self-esteem, which is another word for what? An ego. I had an ego. So 24 hours into my company, guess what we did? Guess what we did? We sold a house. This is my college roommate, 25 years old. I was 26. He needed a job. I was like, well, get your real estate license. Come work with me. Literally 24 hours into the company, we sold a house. I thought I had it figured it out. Who here owns our company? Raise your hand. Big reason I started my company was to keep 100% of my commission. Right? Stupid. So stupid. But we sold a house. And I thought I had it figured out. I was making money. I had people working for me. And I played golf once. Right? Like golf. Anybody in here play golf to get business? 
why does it have to be 18 holes? It's such a long time. I'd freak <laughs> out. And this guy still works at my company now. But what happened to me the next day, it was 48 hours into the business. I had a company that, in my mind, was massive. I had three realtors, which is impressive. And, and, and at that point in my life, that was more than I ever thought I'd have working for me. We had a 110-square-foot office. You guys know how big that is? It's about these two tables, right? And I was the leader. I was feeling it. And all of a sudden, someone came up to me, and I saw something on their face, and I didn't know what it was. Whoa. Tears. Hey, what's going on? She got a little bit closer. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, hey, what's up? She's like, hey, my, my boyfriend just dumped me. I'm not, no, I, I, yeah, I hope your boyfriend didn't just dump you. You're married. So she told me this, and I was like, in my head, I was like, what the hell does it have to do with me? So I made the biggest mistake of my life up to that point. You know what I asked her to do? I'm like, hey, sit down. I've seen Dr. Phil like once. So we sat there, and I can, I'm not going to tell you her name, um, for five hours. Literally. We went through five Kleenex boxes, and I was sitting there, and I was looking at my watch the whole time. I couldn't wait to get out of there because I had a showing. So I finally got out of there. Like I said, she went through the Kleenex boxes, and her and her boyfriend remained broken up, by the way. Um, she's still a realtor, not for my company. But I went through, and I, I went to my next showing. I, I, I left. I was like, you know, what's the quote from A League of Their Own? There's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in real estate. Not time to cry, especially if I, like, lose a relationship. Like, whatever. My quote has always been to keep it moving. You keep it moving. I'm not going to waste my time listening to somebody cry. And she had their tears. So I thought it was a fluke. And I was wrong. I was really, 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 really wrong. I had gone from business of selling myself, right? I was a realtor for another company. And that's my job every single day was to sell myself. My job quickly shifted to being a manager. And guess what I was managing? People. That's it. Managing people. Guess what people come with? Their personalities. And guess what they come with on top of that? Their issues. Every single day. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, yeah, what's up? This happened. Oh, my God. Nothing had to do with real estate. Nothing. So what I did, what do you all think I did to, to like, make a good move? What did I do? I started hiring. I was like, what's the best way to get rid of noise? With more noise. So I started doing it. I was like, this is great. I go up to people, like, like, like real estate schools, right? If you guys are looking to grow your company, a great way to do it and to get burned later on is to go to a real estate school. You go tell them your story, and you're going to be different than everyone else. I am this great. I'm accomplished, blah, 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 blah. All I cared about was that they passed their test. Pass your test. You got a pulse. Welcome to the team. Literally. And we started to grow. The more people I had working for me, in my mind, the more money I was going to make, right? Hell no. Wrong. It took me almost 10 years, guys, but I finally realized the next lesson in my business journey. 10 years. Crazy. 10 freaking years. And I'd sit in this room with people like Koki and Rob and Amanda, and every single time I'd see them, I had a different story. I had a different crazy girlfriend, and every time I was like, this, it's like wrong. The common denominator was like, whoever said, someone said earlier, you still dating that cute girl? I was like, uh, <laughs> that's the one for five months ago, right? The common denominator was me. It took me 10 years. That sucks. I wasted so much of my time. My 20s and my 30s were completely sacrificed to real estate. And I could have enjoyed it differently. And then I realized something. There's a, there's a great parallel about building a house. You can't build a house on sand. You can't. And that was my company up to that point. Ten years, by the way, guys. This was two years ago. So if, you guys, uh, if I met some of you guys in Chicago for that really, really hot and sweaty photo shoot, uh, this is kind of when I, I started to figure it out. And I started to figure it out. I started to talk. And like, I'd always lead with my story. And I was always so negative, which, which sucked. It sucked but I'd figured it out. So I realized that up until that point, every single ounce of success that I had had was based off of my energy. My energy. Guess what that does? It sucks it out of you. My energy. I thought I was electric. I thought my ego was going to drive me everywhere, every single place I wanted to go. It sucked. But still, my why, unfortunately, was my desire to prove myself to everyone that I was a success. Every single person. And if I met someone and I introduced myself, I'm like, hi, I'm Rogers. You know what they would ask me? What do you do? What? You, I was like, have you ever been in a car? It's like, are you kidding me? 
it drove me crazy. So for me, that was like, that was another opportunity. There's another reason to go and have a bigger ego. So it's a ticking time bomb. Has anyone ever felt that before? Good for you. Okay, one person. Just one person. Four people. Okay, I was a ticking time bomb. So my, my goals quickly shifted, guys, from being the best real estate agent and the best, having the best real estate company, like I told you, to the biggest. That's what I thought was going to work. We started off with three realtors. We grew to 20. Grew to 30. 30 became 60. And if you guys know anything about real estate brokerage and you own your own company, you make money one of two ways. Less than 60, more than 200. And I heard that, right? And it was a statistic, and I became obsessed with it. From 60 agents to 100, from 100 to 150. And by the way, this was over the course of like six or seven years. And we get these awards, like, like she mentioned earlier, um, it's a blessing and a curse. And if you get an award, like the, guy, uh, the gentleman earlier was talking about like putting an ad out, want to love your job. Like, if you're going to do that as a real estate brokerage, like, make sure you know that they're, you're talking to them as a realtor. We get these awards for best places to work. Incredible. My company got named the number one place to work in the entire Metroplex out of 23,000 companies. 23,000. In 2011, I was 31 years old. The next day, it was published in the newspaper. Guess what started happening? I want to come work for you. Are you yeah, of course. Like, I don't even need to meet you. You want an email address? Let's go. I started doing this. We grew from 100 to 150 agents and from 150 agents to 350 people. It was crazy. I thought I had it figured out. Guess what I started taking? I took a vacation. And I'd laugh. And I'd sit there. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, why didn't I do this earlier? And then guess what started to happen? People quit. People quit. Like my people, right? And if you guys start a company, and, and like you talked about earlier, it's unfortunate and so true you can't get attached. But I get attached quick. I get attached real quick. I'm a sensitive, emotional, heart on my sleeve, kick me in the face kind of guy. But they quit. And my people that were my originals went from like three people to 40 over the course of six or seven years. And all of a sudden, people started coming in there. And guess what it would do to the culture? It would kill it. And they would quit. And the first like 100 people that would quit me, guess how I would respond? See ya. I was angry. I was really, really angry. But I thought I had to figure it out, like I told you guys. And every single day, literally every single day, for like a solid five or six years, one of these, one of these things would happen. Number one, knock on my door. And you can just see the person you haven't talked to in a few months, right? You guys, you know, you know that feeling. It's like there's people that work for me that I see them twice a year. Christmas party and happy hour, right? And then there's those people you see every single day and you start to like study their tendencies, five minutes left, you st and, and like they would quit. And the worst thing that would happen to me out of anything is they'd send me a text message. They'd say, Rogers, th thank you for everything. Well, you're welcome. But I'm going in a different direction. Screw you. Why? Why? Their answer? They didn't know who they were working with. They felt left out. And they felt like they were just a number. And they, all felt, they felt like all this revolved around me. It was all about me. Me, my company, how much work I've put in, blah, blah, blah. So my translation with this, guys, was everything I had worked for up to that point, and every single feeling I wanted to go and feel on, every, on a daily basis was the exact opposite of what I was giving my people. I let them down. Then, thank God, my why grabbed me by the throat. I'm going to be done in two minutes. It, it grabbed me by the throat. You guys ever had that feeling where it's like you cannot go and avoid it, no matter what anyone says? It grabbed me by the throat and had me down on my knees, and I was, it was asking me for direction. Having the biggest real estate company, it's not a hard thing to do. I mean, it is, but it's not. That means you have to have numbers. And just about anybody with some time, no girlfriend, and some skinny jeans can do that. Okay? But having the best company, guess how many people can promote that? One. That was my goal. I knew my why wasn't building and maintaining a real estate company. I had to do that. Making money is great, right? For real. It's great. Yes? It's not the greatest, though. Doing deals, like I'm a deal junkie. Anybody in here a deal junkie? Like, like heavy volume, like transactions. Like there's no better feeling to me than like getting a deal done especially when you're beating 15 other people. That's a great feeling, but it's not the best feeling. What, like winning awards, also really, really cool. Like raise your hand, you guys are all 30 or 30 winners, right? Guess who's gonna remember that in five or six years? Nobody, nobody. So when I threw my ego out the door and I focused on what was most important, my business and more importantly, my life took shape. The right people started calling me. They wanted to join my firm, our firm. I finally started to become the man that God made me to be and I started breathing. I started to breathe, and I stopped worrying. Prior to this shift in my mindset, I would worry every single year about my production. You guys, you guys know that feeling, right? Like, I just would get hyper-focused, 50 million bucks, 100 million bucks, billion dollars, whatever. But two years ago, people forget about it. 
I get to focus on my people now. It gives me joy. So here I am now. I'm almost 38 years old, like in two weeks, which is crazy. Freaking crazy. 38. I got a girlfriend. I don't have skinny jeans anymore. I like to fish. And I, like I talked about, I have a, a really, really good spray tan. But I finally figured out what, what my why is and what drives me. Okay? And I put a post out in our Facebook group this morning, 45 seconds, and I'm done. We have a company Facebook group, and I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to go meet with these people today, and I want to know what y'all's why is. And the answers were awesome. All right? People wanted to go and support their family. They want to feel like they're led by Christ, and she wants to love people. My wife and five children can't let, my, let me down. Brian James, who's my guy over here uh, helping me out, his why is his mom. He lost his mom. She passed away. But he wants to make her proud every single day. That is a why. So I tell you guys this because what's happened to me over time and over almost 20 years of doing this and interviewing probably 1,500 people, it's a lot of people, and I do every single interview at my company, every single day I get to ask them, what is your why? Every day. And I would struggle with this. And I'd find myself like wondering, what the hell is my why? Right? Like, what is my destiny? What is my journey? What's my reason? And then I realized my why is helping everybody else figure out theirs. Cheers. Wow, that was an incredible presentation. And I wonder if you're anything like me, have you asked yourself these questions? Number one, why am I alive? And that's the question around existence. Why do I exist? Number two, why does my life matter? And that's kind of that significance discussion that a lot of people want to have. And then number three, the question that you might have asked yourself at some point as you're thoughtfully reflecting on life is, what on earth am I here for? And that's purpose. Well, Rogers, as you heard in his presentation, talks a lot about purpose and his path towards finding his purpose. I'd like to just give you a quote here that will help accentuate that point from author George Bernard Shaw. This is the true joy in life. The being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one. The being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. George Bernard Shaw, thank you for that. And that, as you know, is uh, over 100 years old, that quote. Uh, Mr. Webster, if you're looking at the dictionary, defines the word purpose as something set up as an, obje as an object or end to be attained. I like that last part of it. Purpose is something set up as an end to be attained. Synonyms for the word purpose are ambition, destination, mission. Ooh, I like that. Let's go on a mission to accomplish something. Your reason is another synonym and predetermination. Predetermination is a funny word. A lot of people don't really know what that means because I'm a big believer that we have free will as humans. And so this idea of predetermination is kind of funny for a lot of people to think about. Um, so what we'd like to do here is actually go into several things that are actually scriptural, that are from the Bible, as you heard Rogers say in his keynote presentation. Rogers Healy mentioned that he's a Christian. And uh, I'm a Christian as well. I grew up Catholic. And for those of you that might know me personally, um, kind of had a wayward teenage and college uh, experience um, and got my life back on track. And uh, after having our kids, my career coach, a guy named Rory Vaden, I honestly owe my uh, spiritual life to Rory. And I was feeling this way anyways, but Rory really led me down this path. I was sitting in Rory's office in Nashville, Tennessee, a number of years ago. And Rory told me, he said, Kyle, you know, you can accomplish a lot in your life, but if you don't figure out what your purpose is through Jesus Christ, through God, uh, it's going to end up all being empty. And that's the most important thing that you get plugged into a church that fires you up, a church that what you hear on Sunday makes you a rock star on Monday. And so Rory actually gave me some steps here and I'm going to talk about some scripture and I don't want you to feel like I'm beating you over the head with my spirituality. Uh, this is what's worked for me. This is my own personal testimony and it's some um, other content that's from a real famous pastor that I hope will mean something to you at some point. All right. So as we talk about predetermination in scripture, in uh, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he says it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. 
long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. And that's from the book of Ephesians in the Bible, chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. Well, Pastor Rick Warren is the New York Times bestselling author of a book called The Purpose Driven Life. And Pastor Rick Warren really, um, in that book, decided he wanted to answer the question, what on earth am I here for? That's a lot of what we think about, especially after you live some life. Uh, maybe your ups and downs all of a sudden are making you feel like, especially for me, if I've got a big win in life, I'll, I'll think about, you know, what does this mean? What am I really here for? And then obviously, when we're down in the dumps, and that happens at times, that question will come back again, what on earth am I here for? So Pastor Rick Warren, the senior pastor of Saddleback Church in California, answers that question a number of different ways, three different ways here. So number one, Pastor Rick Warren in his book, Purpose Driven Life, says that you discover your identity and purpose through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Item number two, God was thinking of you long before you ever thought of him. Item number three, the purpose of your life fits into a much larger cosmic purpose that God has designed for eternity. So this is a discussion about eternity, but it's also a discussion about your vocation because while you're here, I believe that you might as well get about the work that God puts you on this earth for. So there's another part of scripture that I think a lot of people have heard, but I'll say it in case you haven't. It could be one of the most important Bible verses. It's certainly one of the most quoted, and it's John 3.16 uh, from the New International Version, which is, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. So through a relationship with Jesus Christ and simply saying, God, I know I'm a sinner. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I accept him into my heart. That is as simple as it gets. And so if you've ever prayed that simple prayer, if you've ever been to a church where they say you can be saved through making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, now that doesn't mean that you're off the hook and you can do whatever you want. God also and Jesus remind you that you need to repent from your sins, uh, ask for forgiveness, and continue to repent throughout your life once you become saved. Pastor Rick Warren goes into detail in his book that everyone's life is driven by something. And uh, drive is one of those really, I think, powerful words. You think of driving a car, driving the lane in basketball, football, a lot of times, uh, an offensive effort towards the end zone is called a drive. There are um, driving a golf ball, all these different things about driving, driving a nail into a board. So everyone's life is driven by something, says Pastor Rick Warren from Saddleback Church and the author of The Purpose Driven Life. He says, number one, many are driven by guilt. That's number one. Number two, many are driven by resentment. Number three, many are driven by fear. Number four, many are driven by materialism. Number five, many are driven by the need for approval. Pastor Rick Warren reminded me as I was reading this that knowing your purpose gives you meaning to your life. Knowing your purpose simplifies your life. Knowing your purpose energizes your life. And knowing your purpose prepares you for eternity. And I believe that heaven is eternity. And that's what God wants for us. But God gave us some gifts. God gave us some spiritual gifts. He gave us some physical gifts. Some might be tall. Some might be real fast. Some might be really wonderful communicators. Some might be wonderful servants. Some might be uh, real drivers and people that get things done. So I think it's important that each of us think about our purpose as you're working on different things that are worthwhile. Mark Twain has famously been quoted by saying the most, the two most, excuse me, important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Again, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. I did a presentation at the very beginning of this podcast called Dear Younger Me, and I've used this in several examples of finding out your why is there's a very very famous author named Simon Sinek 
Simon Sinek has written several books, one of which called Start With Why. The other is Leaders Eat Last, two great titles. Simon Sinek has a TED Talk, and Simon in that TED Talk talks about the golden circle. And uh, we don't need to get into that. I'd actually rather you just look up Simon Sinek and find his TED Talk. It's been downloaded millions upon millions of times now. And uh, I just think it's important that people understand their purpose in life. I have a purpose, you have a purpose, and we are called by God to live out our purpose. And an exercise that I found was very helpful for me to figure this out. As I was going through, I just accomplished a major goal in my life. And uh, that goal for me was paying off my house, uh, living debt free. We did that in 2014, Courtney and I did. And then in 2015, we decided that that house, which our three little toddlers uh, had you know, ridden their tricycles throughout the house and banged things into the walls and just started to deteriorate. We loved our location. We loved our neighborhood, but we wanted to renovate and do an addition. So in 2015, I was doing a lot of soul searching as we were doing that renovation, doing a lot of prayer. I ended up getting baptized at Crossroads Community Church that year in 2015. And in July, I was taking a class called the Legacy Journey. And legacy, that word is all about what you leave behind as you leave this earth. As you think about eternity and you might leave our world here on earth, what are you gonna leave behind? What are people gonna remember you by? And this is a wonderful class by someone that I really admire, a mentor of mine, Dave Ramsey, that you've heard me talk about time and time again. So The Legacy Journey is a video series. It's also a book. I've read the book, I've done the video series. I've actually conducted that class along with Financial Peace University. And I came up with this idea because frankly, I operate in the spirit of wanting to get feedback from others. Um, I'm a words of affirmation person. You've heard me say that as one of my five love languages. And uh, the words of affirmation thing can, can be a very strong suit of mine, but I have to be careful about it because I can always find myself looking for affirmation from people. But I took you know, about a dozen people my parents, for example, uh, my wife's cousin, my wife, obviously, Courtney, um, some of my pastors, and I sent them an email saying I was going through this Sunday school class and I was working on it and I was asking for a quick favor. I said, Courtney and I are in a Sunday school class at church called The Legacy Journey, and we get assigned homework after each class. I've been working on my homework this morning, which was to take a pre-selected list and choose words that best fit my number one, core values and passions, number two, my personality aspects, and my number three was activities that bring my core values to life. So I already selected the final answers and I wanted each of these important people in my life to give me feedback on the personality aspects. And so I had pre-selected these personality aspects, these words. I'm optimistic, I'm competitive, number two. Number three, I'm connected. Number four, I'm motivated. Number five, I desire harmony where I like to live in harmonious situations. And number six, I'm outgoing. And I figured that of those six items, that might be something that would be helpful for me to share with you so that you could know that that's a little bit of my personality and it should be authentic. You should see that throughout watching me present on YouTube and or listening to me on iTunes. But what was important for me is I was trying to figure out my top two and I got some amazing responses that, uh, from some really important people. And these are responses that are private. Um, but I will tell you that it was really wonderful. I got some great encouragement. The, our podcast is, is designed to encourage. And this was a really helpful exercise. So whether you read The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, or you read The Legacy Journey by Dave Ramsey, or you take that video series class, which is phenomenal, by the way, about figuring out how you can create a legacy. I would just encourage you to really dive deep and figure out your purpose. I know that my purpose is in Christ. My purpose is in God. I'm a child of God. And it's really important for me to share that with you. Um, I know that there's a lot of things that get messed up in our world as it relates to faith. But I will tell you that by and large, if you adhere to what's in the Bible, it is one of the best personal growth and, and instructive 
writ writings ever. It's also historical. There are so many different things that have cited the historical accuracy of the Bible. And so I wanted to share with you my personal mission statement. This is something that's really personal to me and I'm going to read it to you and then we'll end the show. So this was something that I drafted in early um, 2016 or 2017. I believe it was actually early 2017. Sorry about that. So going on a couple of years ago now, here's my personal mission statement. And it came from that exercise back in 2015 of trying to figure out my personality. So here it is. Kyle Malnati, child of God, was born on earth to encourage, empower, and educate everyone to live their best lives. Kyle's mission is a focus on faith, hope, and love through the perspective of family, financial responsibility, personal development, and wellness. Now, as you can tell, that is a purpose that weaves right on through this podcast. So I hope you feel like that's authentic. I put that together in early 2017. I didn't start recording this podcast until several months later. So that was the beginnings of my podcast journey with the Calibrate Real Estate Podcast. I hope that you've learned some things today that might benefit your life. Uh, my prayer is that you would find Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if so, you need to find a great local community church. I prefer a non-denominational community church, but I know there's great Catholic churches, great Lutheran churches, and a lot of people get stuck on the specific type of religion. And there's a lot of types of Christianity, and basically it all dives back to the Bible. You can just read the Bible by yourself and adhere to it. But I will tell you that having a prayer journey and having people around you that can stretch you in areas to continue to live out your purpose vocationally in your work and in your day-to-day -day living is very important. Well, I hope this message on our 50th episode, our 50th episode, that's right, was important to you. As we end the year, it's just important for me to have a a spirit of gratitude. Thank you for listening to any of our episodes. We've got several favorites that we're going to highlight towards the end of the year. We've got a lot of new content coming at the beginning of next year, and that's going to be new interviews, new ideas, things that I'm working on, and just ways that I can help encourage you, empower and educate you. And I'm learning alongside you. So I want to say that I don't always get it right. There are times that I mess it up, but I will tell you that I have a heart for you. I have a heart for serving the real estate professional. That's the area that I'm most passionate about. I know that my purpose is in the real estate industry because I light up whenever I have a discussion with a real estate professional. I had a coffee appointment with another really important person in the Denver real estate industry the other day. And it just lit me up. I could have done it for two hours. And I think that when you are really living in your purpose, it feels like time just slips away. And all of a sudden you look down and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how long I've been here because it feels like I just sat down a few minutes ago. So time just seems to just fly by when you're having fun as, as the old adage is. Well, for my podcast producer, Kayla Davis, for Rogers Healy, our keynote speaker at the beginning of this podcast, I'm Kyle Malnati. For the cast of thousands of you out there listening on iTunes and or watching on YouTube, thank you for being a part of our audience. Thank you for being the reason why we do this podcast. And as I love to say, we will see you around the neighborhood. Happy holidays, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.